Hello and welcome back to Baking with Brie. Today I'm going to be sharing my cinnamon roll recipe as well as the science and history behind it. So we're going to start this recipe out in a little bit of an unconventional way, something you wouldn't expect to go into a cinnamon roll dough. We are going to add one russet potato and we are going to um, we are going to cook this in boiling water and then we are going to mash it and add it to the dough. Now the reason that we do this is because potato starches actually attract and hold more water than wheat starches are able to and this will help increase the moisture content of the dough and it will keep our cinnamon rolls fresher for a longer amount of time. So next we are going to heat up one cup of milk until it comes to about 110 degrees and you don't want it to be any hotter than that or else it will kill the yeast. Now in a stand mixer bowl we are going to add in the milk and then we are also going to add in two and a quarter teaspoons of active dry yeast. That is also the amount that is in one packet of yeast. And we're going to let this sit for about five minutes until you can see that it has begun to foam. Next, we're going to add in two thirds of a cup of sugar along with six tablespoons of melted butter. And then we are going to add in our eight ounces of russet potato that have been mashed. It's about uh, two thirds of a cup along with one egg and then we are also going to add in three and a half cups of flour and one and a half teaspoons of salt. So what I am making here is actually called an enriched dough and it contains butter, eggs, and sugar unlike a regular bread dough and this will make the dough smoother and the fat actually stabilizes the air bubbles resulting in smaller air bubbles and a more even texture. Now looking at a little bit of the history behind the cinnamon roll, cinnamon was actually the spice that launched the age of exploration into motion because it was so sought after. The first sticky buns, a close relative to a cinnamon bun, were actually eaten by the Romans and Egyptians and they used honey, raisins, and dates to sweeten them. The first rendition of something that we would know as a cinnamon bun came about in Sweden and Denmark, but they actually more commonly used cardamom to spice their sweetened bread rolls. So after mixing our dough with the dough hook on our stand mixer for about 10 to 15 minutes, we are going to put it out onto our work surface and we are going to knead it until it becomes nice and pliable. And I would recommend flouring your hands very well. The dough is still pretty soft. You want to be sure to knead your dough for a good uh, three to five minutes just so that you can really develop the gluten. And then we are going to transfer it to a buttered bowl, cover it in plastic wrap, and we are going to let this rise for about one and a half hours or until it's about doubled in size. So now we're going to make the filling, starting with six tablespoons of butter, two thirds of a cup of brown sugar, one tablespoon of ground cinnamon, and a pinch of salt, and we are just going to mix that well together. Now we are going to roll out our dough. You want to be sure to flour the work surface very well before rolling your dough out and as you can see here it has grown quite a bit and we are just going to punch it down and then we are going to roll it into a large rectangle about 14 by 18 inches and you just want to be sure to make sure that it is as even as possible. And then once it is nicely rolled out, we are going to spread the filling in a nice even layer across the dough. And you want to leave just a thin border right at the top, but otherwise you want to spread it right to the edges of the rectangle. So now we are going to begin rolling it at the closest side, the long side, and you want to make sure that it's a nice tight roll. And then we are going to cut these into nine equal-ish 
pieces. I usually just eyeball it. And the way that I cut these, which I find the most success with, is using a piece of unflavored floss. I just put it underneath and then I um, cross them over and pull it through. And this way you do not squish the beautiful spiral like you would if you cut these with a knife. And there you can see that you still got the spiral intact and then I just place that into a pre-buttered 9 by 9 inch baking dish. And I, once again, I just sort of eyeball the um, buns and then we're going to refrigerate these for eight hours and then we are going to take them out of the refrigerator let them rise for an additional hour and a half before placing it into the oven to bake for 40 minutes at 350 degrees and there you can see they are nice and brown and you want to make sure that the internal temperature comes to 210 degrees just to make sure that the middle bun is cooked through as well and now we are going to make some cream cheese frosting to put on top of these cinnamon buns and I started out with four ounces of cream cheese and then I added in one half cup of powdered sugar and a half teaspoon of vanilla extract and I like to mix my cream cheese beforehand a little bit just like I like to cream my butter before adding the sugar with my cookies just it makes everything a little bit easier to blend in and then I'm going to use two to three tablespoons of milk um, just adding as much as you think you need to until it comes to the desired consistency and I also add in a little bit of ground cinnamon into my frosting as well just to make sure that we got cinnamon in all aspects of our cinnamon buns and then I just like to spread it on top you could definitely use a piping bag and do a nice design but I like to just do a nice thick layer of cream cheese and there they are these are actually fairly easy to make once you know what you're doing and they're definitely impressive um, it's honestly just a lot of uh, letting the dough rise more than anything else but they are not super complicated to make and they are really delicious thank you so much for watching be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video so you don't miss any in the future and if you have any suggestions for future videos feel free to leave them in the comments below as always the recipe is in the description as well as on my website bakingwithbrie.com bye